All right. Can everyone hear and see me? It shows my microphone is working. I am not going to be able to talk as loudly and as uh, animated as I usually like to do whenever I am doing any lives or when I'm putting out a podcast or a YouTube video for you guys. Um, I am getting over still a little bit of the sickness that caused me to move this original live to actually this Friday because um, I really wanted to do uh, you know the topic of this live for last Friday. But I'm going to be honest with you guys, like life is how should I describe it? Life is pretty crazy. I'm also going to readjust this just a little bit because it is off at an angle. Um, yeah. So, well, first of all, I, I did not enjoy being sick. Um, you might still hear it in my voice as well, but I have not been able to do any language learning for about two weeks. And that in regards to how this year has turned out, that's a lot of time. Um, it's interesting about the topic that I'm going to present today about the habits that have made me a confident language learner. I can still say that I am pretty confident, but it, it goes, I'm going to go a lot deeper into that, especially in this part of my life where I'm just like, this month has been way more chaotic on top of being sick. <laughs> um, that probably added to the chaos, but running something that I'm just so passionate about and thinking about the future, you know, all of these uh, sort of meanderings, I guess, <laughs> that are befalling adults everywhere, probably you guys out there as well, um, just with planning for the future and thinking about how life is always changing and also our priorities are changing. Um, that has made this month a lot more chaotic than I planned, even though, you know, I could have confidently said maybe about a month ago, yes, I am pretty much learning at least a little bit of a language, maybe immersing in a language um, every other day, sometimes every day in a week. But yeah, that is slowly changing. So um, that's why I've been very absent <laughs> from YouTube as well, just because I know my limits for energy also kind of goes into uh, some of the habits that I've established over the years. Uh, when life does happen and when we really need to uh, reevaluate, right? So I'm seeing Ireton's comment here. Yes, Ireton, it's so lovely to see you again. Oh my goodness, my computer is about to die. Let me fix that really quick. So let's see, did that fix it? Yes. So Ireton, it's so nice to see you here. It, you said excited for a Friday live. Happy official start of spring. Happy official start to spring to you as well. And to everyone who is streaming it with us and also watching the uh, replay once you get to it. It's hard because I, <laughs> I felt the really good weather outside, but I'm also just like, it's spring already. Like it's, it's hard for me to, um, to really comprehend that. So, but yes, happy, <laughs> happy spring and everyone here. Welcome everyone who, uh, who is joining the live chat. Feel free to write as well in the comments, um, where you are coming in from. And this is going to be a very relaxed life. As I said, uh, still getting over some illness, so I'm not as animated as I want to be, <laughs> but we're working within our limits and our human capacities here because that is all that I am about uh, at Language Travel Adopt Deep. So thank you guys for being on the ride with me. I wanted to go into probably each of my five habits and probably between that kind of check in with you guys here and there, feel free to have a conversation, right? And um, in the comments about anything I'm saying, um, any habits that really resonate with you or habits that you're like, Oh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, can we clarify? Um, I do want to announce to you guys as well. Um, amidst all of the chaos, I am very happy to announce I'm hosting a new workshop actually this weekend, and it's called how to mindfully structure your, um, 
your day. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I feel like brain fog is coming on. Okay. How do you mindfully structure your day to skyrocket your language learning? That's where we are really going to go into the nitty gritty of creating not just a routine, right? Because study routines, like you can make them and then you fall off for whatever reason or another life happens. Your energy levels change. Your humanness comes on. We're not machines all the time. Um, so really establishing not only a routine, but a whole system and laying the foundations of that during that workshop so that you can actually take that extra step to confidence. Um, and a lot of this, in fact, um, one of the topics for the habits of, you know, what I'm talking about today and how I reached language confidence. That's really what we're diving, uh, diving deep into, into this particular workshop. I do want to, let's see, share the link with you guys, because even if you cannot make the workshop in person, cause I know that this was a bit uh, of a, um, yeah, a bit of a last minute thing. There is always a replay and for those who have been writing under my comments in the YouTube section, this is also a really good way to get a bonus one-on-one -on -one consult with me. So I know sometimes that people who are interested in working with me, um, I usually give just a discovery call and that's strictly to see exactly what you're struggling with here your struggles described in your own words and see if we are a good fit for each other. But I do love to do workshops. And this is the very first time that I'm offering, um, offering like this bonus consult, um, 30 minutes. And it is all about coaching exactly for what you need. Um, and with a workshop, you also get a worksheet that'll kind of help you walk through the material, whether you are there live or you watch the replay, um, fine with me you get to book your consult. And then you also get um, what I love to call an energy tracker because again, as I'm going to go into our, um, more into our live today with um, energy is so big. So there is, I've typed in the chat as well as just left in the comment section of this live below. For those of you who are watching the replay, um, definitely check that workshop out. We would love to have you there. Um, and again, that bonus one-on-one -on -one console is gold if you want to work with me um, for that. Um, and for if you would like to dive deeper into confidence as well. So Let's go into this first one because for me, that has been, that has been so big is thinking about the word, uh, consistency, right? Because I see so many language learners and also knowing how much pressure it has put on me and other language learners that I have talked to, that I've coached, that I've just, uh, been friends with even, um, saying that you have to stay consistent and, it's all about really seeing, you know, what does consistency mean to you? That was my first habit is knowing that your definition of consistency can change throughout your life. Um, obviously, if you have a certain goal, there does need to be some sort of consistency, but people are so rigid and think that they have to live by these certain rules of whatever a language expert or um, any like language influencer says works for them. And then they get it into their head like, oh, like this is actually what I need to be doing because it's working for them. So it's going to work for me. Right. And as I said before, as I was going through my very own chaotic month of what I've been through and just not feeling good this month, definitely skipping out on the language learning. Um, would I still say that I'm consistent in the season of life? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. Because my definition of consistency is how consistent is my mindset? Um, especially because considering the circumstances, um, you know, I am going to the polyglot gathering for this upcoming May, which I'm super excited about. So that's why I was wanting to ramp up a little bit more of language learning. So, uh, I could also work on switching between languages again before I hop into that sort of environment. But, um, 
yeah, but am I matching others' definitions of consistency, aka like speaking without a doubt five days out of the week, three days out of the week, um, whatever that may be? No, I'm definitely not. But what is consistent is my mindset and the fact of saying that is okay, of being self-compassionate with myself, that is okay. Um, and you are going to show up <laughs> however you are going to show up right now and honor your capacity. Also why I had to move this live to this Friday instead of last Friday, as I said before, uh, because it just was not going to be good for me. I probably would have gotten even more sick <laughs> if I had forced myself uh, to be there last week live, even though I did miss you guys. Um, and it's been a while since we've had a live as well. So I'm glad here I'm here today. But consistency for me, that is truly my mindset. Because really, if we think about it, with the world, and all of our experiences that make us us, um, and that shape the others around us or our environment. Of course, all of that is our own perception, right? And we're not going to be looking back at our lives and our language learning um, once our lives are coming to an end thinking, okay, how consistent was I, <laughs> right? Um, did I do every single lesson with that teacher every single week back in 2022, right? Um, really thinking about the specifics. I know us language learners love to think analytically. We love logic. We love looking at the metrics and numbers. But at the end of your life, that's not what you're going to be thinking about, right? That's not what I'm going to be thinking about at my end of my life. And so knowing that about myself, knowing that honestly about <laughs> humanity a lot of the time, um, knowing that if I can keep myself into locked into more of a compassionate, more neutral perspective of how I talk to myself about my language learning, um, how consistent can I be in that? Because that is going to shift my whole perspective right? That is going to shift my whole memory of what language learning meant to me when I think about it at the end of my life, right? Um, it's interesting because our emotions shape our memories so, so often without us even really uh, thinking about it, right? And there have been so many times in my language learning really early on and probably in the middle where I thought, you know, it is it's hard for me to even really think, even really appreciate any of this. Um, I'm just heading to the next goal. I'm not even going to look back. I'm not even going to reflect. Right. Um, and thinking about, um, you know, thinking about really how it is this constant urgency, this constant anxiety that I am putting, uh, that I'm facing because I'm putting so much pressure on myself. Um, and I have been doing so for years, right? Um, if that is all that my language journey was from last, uh, you know, when I look back, um, at the end of my life on it, on it, just its entirety, then that memory is going to be pretty soiled for me, right? Just feeling constant anxiety and panic and urgency and feeling not good enough, right? Tying my worth to my languages and how well I'm doing in them um, all the time, right? Such a huge mental and emotional barrier that we language learners face, um, which is exactly what I talk about working with and overcoming in um, my workshop that I put in the chat down there for you guys. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really the quality of how we show up in the world that is the most important. That is what I always have consistently within my mindset that carries me forward and keeps me going. So I'm not bogged down with um, all of the really negative self-talk that we can spiral easily into as ambitious language learners, right? Um, if a study session isn't turning out how we want, or like me, you had a chaotic month or a chaotic week and nothing is going your way, it seems, in your learning. And we get even more frustrated. I mean, we just spiral down and down and down uh, emotionally, and it is such a grueling ride, right? So that is how I define consistency. And I really um, encourage you guys to think about what uh, consistency 
means for you in this season of your life and know that it really can change and it's healthy for it to change. Um, Usually that's one of the things holding us back. If we think only about consistency as a language acquisition game, right? It's truly all in the mindset um, for that kind of stuff. Hello, Bakir. Merhaba. Nasılsın? Yes. Thanks for greeting us in the live there. So that was my very first sort of talking point with consistency. I definitely changed my motivation. And this is another thing. Really, all of these habits are going to tie into each other as I talk about them. But another thing is really living through your uh, values in your languages. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Sami, for the one euro 19 cents. Um, being interrupted right there. Okay. Uh, so what I mean by this, right? Living by our values in our languages and how we see, first of all, if we are living by our values in our life, right? Because language learning is an integral, it can be a very integral part of our lives, but it's also very, it can also carry us away from ourselves in a sense, right? It can really disconnect us from ourselves. And by that, I'm always referring back to um, a lot of our negative self-talk, a lot of our um, negative thinking about our progress in our languages. All of that is so, it can be so damaging and it really blocks us from our curiosity that we naturally had when we started our languages, um, our love of the process of learning and anything else that you might kind of think of. Those are the the first two that kind of come to mind. Um, really the love of adventure for me as well. I totally lost adventure in the joy um, that I felt when I initially started learning languages because of how I was talking to myself about my language learning. Um, that is always what gets us stuck, right? We have all of the resources, right? I mean, sometimes we don't, depending on if it's a rarer language that we are learning. Um, But there are ways to find those resources, right? There are ways that we can consciously talk to ourselves about our language learning journey if it's harder to find those resources for ourselves for a less popular uh, language that's learned, right? Um, And yeah, so being disconnected to the self, right? We are disconnected to what drives us and gives us joy and makes us us because we're, we are <laughs> unconsciously probably at this point, if we've been doing this for years, if we've been talking negatively to ourselves about our learning for so, so long, um, that is really what counts. And that is really what either brings us more into ourselves and being more connected to our values or what drives us further away from the connection to ourself and the connection to our values, right? So if I were to tell you sort of my values for life, and I honestly, I really had to sit with them, right? Um, Not something that you have to think about for hours upon days upon whatever, um, because what's important to you is important to you, right? There's something that is important out there for everyone. Um, But actually giving yourself space instead of just thinking, okay, I mean, I guess, I guess adventure, that's it right? Really think about why would you say that? What experiences have led you to value that in your life? Um, And I wrote some things down here as well, just considering life in general. I do value curiosity. I do meet myself where I am all the time. Hence, I am living out that value right now of you know, moving this live to Friday or not studying languages for the time being, because it is just not, um, yeah, it is just not productive for me to do that right now. It will get me into, um, a really negative head spiral and lower my energy levels more than Cygnus already has. Right. Um, so always meeting myself where I am. And honestly, sometimes meeting myself where I am, that does mean like hustling, for a little bit, right? In my language learning, I'm kind of going all out learning, um, 
you know, six languages per day I've done before, or at least making contact with that many, because sometimes, you know, our energy levels are going to go up, right? Um, again, I talk about how we truly manage our energy levels and how we can build a mindful, um, not only routine, but system on top of um, energy management and using energy management as a foundation for everything that we do in our languages, right? Um, yeah. And so it's interesting because meeting yourself where you are, it can go a lot of ways depending on your energy. That's all I wanted to say. Um, and, you know, kindness, right? Because I, and I think that this is probably a shared value of a lot of us, kindness to other people. Um, but if we do have kindness, then it's always important to show it to ourselves. Sounds a little bit corny, but I mean, truly that that's what this is um, about, right? And kindness, again, what I was talking about, if we are very unkind to ourselves, talking down to ourselves so much, um, discounting what we have done, um, there are so many sort of traps that we can fall into, right? With um, being disconnected to ourselves through such negative self-talk, right? Or through talk that discounts what we have done um, or puts everyone else above all of what we've ever done in our learning, right? Um, so truly being kind to myself kind of goes into what I was talking about with my second point. Um, that is super important to me, right? And of course, values in general, right? We can state them, but if we do not live them out, then they're just words, right? So really knowing my values and checking in with them to see when they shift, if they shift, um, you know, when do they shift? Maybe what caused a value to shift or change for me? Those are so important to track for all of us. Um, and regularly check in emotionally again, cause we love all of the analytics. We love all the streaks and the numbers and, um, the really nice sounding dings right at the end of like a Duolingo sort of uh, study session <laughs> on any sort of app, right? But um, we always mess checking in emotionally with ourselves, truly, truly. Um, when I figured that out, that's what really, really positively impacted my language confidence. Like my language learning skyrocketed once I knew my values and how to live through them with my languages. Um, so I'm going to go back to you guys in the chat here and see what the next, I think my third point that I wanted to kind of talk about really quickly. Hey guys, coming in, feel free to again, drop any comments, questions that you have any revelations, reflections on our topic for today. So I think my, uh, my voice is also pretty good. Again, I'm talking a little bit, uh, quieter because, uh, kind of hurts to talk sometimes louder. <laughs> so, uh, but let's see. Yeah. So again, for those kind of catching everyone up, um, from what I was talking about before, right? Changed my definition of consistency. Um, knowing and being aware that my definition of consistency will change um, and that that consistency involves not only studying, right? It also involves my, um, how consistent am I with compassionately talking to myself um, and talking to myself with kindness about where I am at any point in my language learning journey. That was the first one. The second one, live by my values and bring my values to life through my language learning to really find out what's important to me, right? Third one, which we've kind of already talked about again, energy management. Um, again, I'm doing a whole workshop on this, um, again, that I put in the chat below, um, as well as in the comments under this stream for the replay, because I know how much of a deep dive the subject is and how much um, we really do not talk about it in the language learning community, right? Energy management is way more important than time management, even though I know time management is is all over the internet, right? All over the, the productivity gurus and everything, um, all over their accounts and, and everything like that. So it's interesting. And I, I'll just give you a 
an overview, right? If you watched my last video on how to optimize your, I think, time and energy for language learning um, and manage them, I talk a little bit about this too, right? There are always four wellsprings of energy that depend on each other, right? They're not the same thing, but they're strongly interconnected, right? So we have physical energy, kind of self-explanatory, right? If we don't um, eat enough or drink enough, we don't rest properly, um, that can definitely make our physical energy go down. And also for mental energy, which we think about, you know, all the time in language learning, right? The capacity to think and thinking actually takes a lot of energy. Like it takes like 25% of our body's oxygen and it's only um, probably about 2% of our body weight more or less, right? So it takes so much energy to think. Um, definitely, you know, code switching a lot, um, not disengaging at all, um, not kind of emptying yourself out and taking a break from whatever you've been doing consistently, constantly. Um, your phone screen, I have to do that so much <laughs> since we're all kind of working from home. I definitely am. Um, and then emotional energy, right? Which is equally as important as physical and mental energy, but it is way less talked about and it's a lot less understood. It's also a little bit more complicated to refuel compared to um, physical and mental energy, right? Emotional energy. Um, how are we feeling? How are we talking to ourselves? Are we connected to others, right? And knowing that when that emotional energy is low for us, that's when our inner critic starts showing up right? That's when our feelings about imposter syndrome start showing up. Um, I mean, just so many things that are important to pay attention to outside of what am I doing in my languages, right? Because um, it's it's easy to get caught up again in the metrics and the numbers and, oh, what level am I compared to that person? Oh, this textbook said I'm this level, um, like a B1, but I feel like an A1 when I talk, right? Like we, we love concentrating on the numbers and the levels, right? Um, but again, taking a more mindful approach to this um, and more therapeutic and holistic approach, honestly, <laughs> if we're talking about um, taking care of all four of these areas of energy, right? Um, we start to equate our worth as language learners and as people to the outcome of our language learning journey, right? Um, we lose joy in the process and we keep on pushing, right? Until we discover a weight. Like I've, I've kind of lost myself. I've kind of lost my joy. Um, I'm not sure how to get out of it. I feel stuck again, right? Um, so most of the time, language learners and really a lot of people in the sphere, they already know what to do. I've observed most of them already know what to do, but they just don't, um, they can't access that part of themselves because of their negative self-talk. Right. Um, and I always love to kind of unravel what we are talking to ourselves about. What are the narratives that we are constructing around our language learning and how we think about it? Um, that's really, really going to make a difference and then how we show up, how we look at our learning, how we analyze our language learning process and actually know um, more about how to be connected to ourselves through our learning, right? Um, so a lot of that has to do with emotional energy and spiritual energy, the fourth one, um, which we've already been talking about, right? Um, Non-religious and that is mainly talking about your purpose, right? That involves knowing your core values. Um, that involves thinking about, okay, what is my purpose? And am I doing all this language learning just for what it gets me? Or is there something outside of my own self-interest that I'm doing language learning for? Um, and there usually already um, already is, but sometimes it's, it's really hard to uh, sit with yourself and think about, you know, what, what am I doing other than just for my own self-interest, right? And this language learning thing. Um, what is my purpose in all of this? So again, we go through all of that in um, our workshop to really set that mindful system um, up for you with a lot of um, a lot of my tips and tricks, and as well as just formulas um, that really give you a chance to reflect and think about. It is such a gift to just have time to reflect and look back, right? Because most of the time we're we're always on <laughs> in in this world, right? So. Um, 
Yes. Chris, nice to see you. It looks like your name is also in Japanese. So I am not going to pretend to know that, but yeah, uh, we're glad that you're here. Uh, and you had written, da, da, da, I can't stay for the whole time. No problem. I love that you're kind of dropping in, uh, but your focus on self-care when learning languages hits home. We have to just dance in the sweet memories of what motivates us to study languages in the first place. Yeah, it is such a personal journey. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really hard to, um, it's really hard though sometimes to look back at our memories um, that were more negative and really think about, okay, how is this really, like, what is the cost of um, speaking so negatively to myself about what I am doing? Um, also, Chris, thank you for the super chat. Um, yes, and you said your name, Japanese, comma, or no, Japanese apostrophe SR. Very cool. You know what? Japanese is actually on my list of languages to learn, uh, but not for the very foreseeable future because I'm right now I'm kind of thinking, um, thinking my way around Chinese and Korean, or I'm sorry, Mandarin, Chinese and Korean, but lovely to see uh, and really here as well, kind of keep uh, myself updated on how Japanese, and I think you're learning Korean as well as going, Chris. So thanks for, for being here. Um, yeah. Oh, it looks like I can heart these as well. So that's awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, awesome, you guys. Yeah. But yeah, definitely throw all of your, any thoughts, more thoughts you have in the comments. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as well with energy, management too, right? Um, there really is a difference between when we think about different life stages, right? Um, when we think about college, when we think about um, high school, when we think about for married, right? If we think about going abroad for the first time, maybe studying abroad, um, staying in the same place, maybe not going to college at all and working full time after that, right? I know some people have done that. Um, a life stage with kids, right? Um, it's interesting because I had seen Ollie Richards talk more about how, um, you know, his life is changing, how his priorities are changing um, as he runs a language business, um, as he has more, wants more time with his kids, right? He's kind of um, noticing what the stress of what he's doing kind of bring to life in his career is taking away from in his personal life. And I think that's so important for us to consider, right? Um, because definitely for me as well, right? I unfortunately <laughs> cannot take five, uh, sign up, right? For five language classes and have that um, advantage, right? Both of the time to actually do that and just fill my brain with all of that great uh, information that other people will do for me, right? But also energy because um, everything is given to you, of course. It still takes effort and work, but you are on a course curriculum, right, for a language, and you don't need necessarily to look for more outside of that unless you want to, right, in order to keep on going with that language. So, um, and then I've heard from other people with kids, right? Um, they're always the first priority for a lot of older language learners that I know. And um, I'm sure that when I have them as well, those are, uh, they're going to also change how my language learning is going, right? Again, consistency with the uh, more self-kindness mindset and how we talk to ourselves in our language learning, right? Um, that is what is consistent for me because I know that if I keep on, being consistent, right? With being conscious and aware of how, and if I'm putting myself down about my language learning, if it's not going the way I wanted, um, if my kids are taking up like all the time that I have and I cannot get to my languages, um, really rooting myself back into the values, really seeing more of, it's not positive thinking necessarily, right? But it's seeing more of, okay, um, my capacity is telling me that I really cannot do everything right now. I'm going to have to take a step back, but it's not a make or break for my language learning. Nothing is a make or break for my language learning. Um, and 
what is going to be meant for me is going to be meant for me. Um, I can come back to this at any time. So really managing our energy through that, both spiritual, emotional, physical, and mental, um, is absolutely crucial. Um, yeah. So that would probably be, be the third habit is energy management for me and really understanding like, how do I know if I am underusing right any of those four areas, or if I'm overusing any of those four areas, usually language learners are overusing um, definitely mental energy, um, more of that area, and they are grossly abandoning um, more of the emotional energy that could really uh, renew them and fill them up and get them um, a lot more focused and solutions oriented. Um, but again, it's hard to see past the numbers. It really is into connecting more deeply with ourselves. So that's why I did, um, I'm constructing a whole workshop about it again with the people that have joined. You are welcome to join me as well. Um, for that, I did put the link in the chat for you to check out the workshop that's going to be held more on, um, Sunday, this Sunday, actually. Um, okay. So for our fourth one, and I'm going to kind of just go into this really briefly, um, again, because it ties into what we've already been doing. Right. Cause I really like a, a more holistic perspective on what we're doing in our languages. Right. Um, but being mindful of negative self-talk. And again, I'm not saying to, replace the negative self-talk with positive self-talk because there's, there's so many misconceptions about thinking about what self-compassion actually is, right? Um, it's not optional, right? It really is not an optional thing. Um, and talking so critically to ourselves whenever we are um, feeling stuck in some kind of language learning problem, or we feel like we can't find um, a solution, right? Um, it's really the negative self-talk that is going to keep you in there, right? Um, and that has been scientifically proven in many studies, um, in many contexts, but especially in language learning, we underestimate that power that, um, how we're talking to ourselves really has. So, um, really making sure that I'm looking at my notes here, really making sure to pull our view of the negative into a neutral perspective. If we can really do that, we're not aiming for toxic positivity, right? Because that does not validate any of our emotions um, on the surface. Yeah. Um, it really drives me crazy when people say, well, just stop thinking negatively, right? Because if you have been thinking negatively about your language learning for years, like I used to, yeah. And sometimes I still do. And I have to use the same tools that I'm about to share with you. But um, when you have been doing that and talking to yourself, putting yourself down personally in your head for so many years, it's not something that you can just automatically stop. Um, same with perfectionism, right? Because I, I know that there are a lot of language learners who are aware of how they want to be their definition of perfect and language learning, right? But they do not understand that it's not that perfectionism is a bad thing. It's the negative self-talk that specifically perfectionists take up to a whole another level um, in their language learning, right? That is actually damaging to them, right? Um, thinking of making a workshop on that too, because um, again, perfectionism is definitely a strength in our learning. So um, really being aware of how we are talking to ourselves again, um, I also cover, I do want to share this with you guys too, if you haven't uh, seen it before. Where is it? Give me a second. I'm just going to rest my voice for just a second. Yeah. Um, but if you're kind of curious about what I mean by bringing more negative self-talk into neutral mode um, and why that's critical to do, then I invite you, let's see if I can find it. Um, there is a free, completely free resource that I made to kind of walk you through this process. If you're kind of confused about what, um, 
what I'm talking about and how to actually start if you feel like um, negative self-talk in your language learning specifically is something that you struggle with, right? Um, let's see. So I invite you to check that out again, totally free. Um, let's see. Yeah, but that's the most that I'm going to go into that for right now. So we've gone a lot into it before. And then, yeah, the last one, really last habit, um, again, all mindset, is knowing that we can grow through joy, right? We can grow through joy, not only through suffering. Um, and some of you might be thinking, you know, well, I mean, maybe I didn't really think about it that way, but um, I'm just going to, you know, keep on making the same mistakes in my language learning and essentially punishing myself um, to try to make myself grow in that way. Um, this is a really unconscious process that even I was going through. Um, and it took me years to really understand that about myself, that I had kind of a, a belief that dictated a lot of my actions in language learning, thinking that um, this has to be hard. Language learning has to be difficult. What I'm doing has to look complicated. Or if we look and we're thinking, you know, kind of in self-comparison mode, oh, this other person seems to be doing more complicated things, or they have a really um, sophisticated routine, or their organization looks sophisticated, right? So I need to be doing that too. Um, or if we compare our, you know, past versions of ourselves that we think were uh, better at certain languages than we feel like we are now, um, that's something that I definitely did was idolize my past self, romanticize what I remember being able to do in another language or when I was younger. And it's not, I don't feel the same anymore. Um, again, change is a very natural, um, it's a very natural stage of life, but it's very easy to equate natural change as a human being um, as complete failure, right? With what we see it doing to our languages because we we don't stay the same, right? Um, but we want to keep on doing some of the same things that we always have seen the fruits of our, um, or we've seen working, right, for our language learning in the past, but for some reason they're not working currently or they start to not be as effective, right? Um, but I mean, truly knowing, yes, we can grow through joy. That helped me to remind myself, right, celebrate those wins, whatever you have. It does not matter how small you think it is or insignificant you think it is, right? You must celebrate. Otherwise, you are not going to have an anchor for life, right? Um, we love celebrations as humans, right? Because they really solidify and help us emotionally process um, the process that we're going through, <laughs> right? Uh, just to, to keep it simple. And so if we don't celebrate at all, if we don't acknowledge at all, what we've been doing on our journey, then we are just, we're just adrift, right? We have no anchor and it's hard to emotionally process what we have truly been going through on our, our language learning. If we do not acknowledge the wins um, and celebrate them as well, this is something that I always work on. Um, and more of my group coaching program for language learners who are multi-passionate, right? They are very ambitious. Um, they have ambitious goals, but they are a bit tired of just hearing about the same um, sort of like acquisition methods over and over, as well as the brushing over the mindset part, right? Because truly everything, everything that we do in, in language learning is about the mindset, um, as I've said before. So that you can introduce celebration and really something that you enjoy on your language learning journey whenever you want to. That's why I always like to um, sometimes even study in my bed. <laughs> that is something that I have started doing recently before I did take like a two week break from language learning due to my chaotic life. And it has been a comfort for me in this time. Now I'm not saying that for every season of life, I'm going to want to sit in my bed, but for me, that brings a sense of comfort to me right? And it brings a sense of 
small joy um, as well, if I can say that, to help me grow, um, to help me concentrate on and focus on what's right in front of me, kind of get a little bit more immersed because if I'm enjoying my environment, um, then I'm also, I find really enjoying what exactly I'm learning in language learning for that day. So um, even just having apple juice, right? I love juice. Sometimes I'll just have it by my bed. Um, and then sometimes again, um, what did I say? Yeah. Joyful, taking a joyful break, whatever that looks like for you. Um, knowing that you will not lose your, your language prog uh, progress, right? Um, it might be fuzzy when you come back after a break, but you regain it back so quickly. We really underestimate how much um, we don't forget, honestly, how much a foundation we have built already in our languages, um, no matter how much of a break you've had. So um, this is just a reminder, you can choose joy, right? A little bit of joy in any moment, if that means orange juice, <laughs> like drinking orange juice while you um, study or anything, or if that means um, respecting more of your energy, um, emotionally and you don't feel as connected to others, that might mean finding joy through a language meetup. Um, if you have been seeing way too many people, then your kind of joy might be um, not going to the language meetups that you know you're going to be missing for that week, right? But um, again, if you have a value of meeting yourself where you are like I do and you are committed to actually living out that value in your learning, however that looks like for you, then that is the most important thing right? Um, you don't need to do everything all at once, the most 100% to enjoy your language learning journey. Again, because at that point where we're kind of suffering, right? If we try to do it all at once, but we think we must do it all at once, that's how we're going to grow. But you can also grow through joy. So those were my five that I am looking at. Yes. Uh-huh. Let me check the comments as well. Aha, Türkçe konuş konuşuyor musunuz? Türkçe konuşamam. Aspe. No. Arapça da şimdi konuşuyorum ama yani Türkçe'de sadece Türkçe'de konuşmak isterim ama bu mümkün değil bugün. Çünkü um yani uh, çok insan bu dili konuşmuyor. Yani sadece İngilizce de konuşacağım. Um, evet. So, sorry Bakir. Özür dilerim. <laughs> uh, but my channel is mainly in, um, mainly in English. Kanalım sadece İngilizce de uh, <laughs> Not really sure. Uh, even do them. Uh, but yeah, so that is what I would say for um for the stream. Again, I apologize that I am not as um animated as I usually am, but again seeing as I'm not really sure about how many videos I'm going to be coming out with in the meantime, just because it has been a chaotic month and I really want to recover from it being a chaotic month. Um, I might be going more often live with you guys on Fridays than usual instead of putting out just as much content. So just kind of be looking around for that. I cannot believe it's almost April. Um, and let's see. Yeah, I think we are all good here. <laughs> Bakir said, it's okay, not a problem. Thank you. Yes, sorun değil, Bakir. Okay, uh, yeah, you guys. So definitely, oh my gosh, I'm looking at my screen now. My room is kind of a mess, so I apologize for that. But um, yeah, thank you guys for joining me. I had so much fun um, talking with all of you and chatting. Um, thank you for all of the super chats. Thank you for being here. And I really hope to see you guys um, either in another video or in another live stream. Okay. All right, you guys. See you later.